Welcome to the GSBI Accelerator Investor Showcase. I'm Thane Kreiner, the Executive Director of the Center for Science, Technology, and Society here at Santa Clara University. Our mission is to accelerate global innovation-based entrepreneurship in service of humanity. And the 14 social entrepreneurs you will hear from today embody that mission. I want to provide a little context for you first, though. On September 18, 2000, the United Nations issued the Millennium Declaration. This has served as a foundation for enormous efforts by governments, non-governmental organizations, and businesses to address the needs of the world's poorest. But the founders of the GSBI, some of whom are with us today, observed that a lot of the innovations related to the United Nations Millennium Development Goals, or MDGs, were not getting to significant scale relative to the size of the problems afflicting the global poor. As a consequence, in 2003, they piloted the GSBI, then the Global Social Benefit Incubator, now the Global Social Benefit Institute. Since then, 232 social enterprises have come through GSBI programs. 90% of them are still in business. Collectively, they've raised $96 million after GSBI programs to invest in scaling their businesses and their impact. And with many different forms of products and services to serve the poor, they've impacted the lives positively of 107 million people worldwide. But that's not enough. We need to do more. Four billion people on the planet are living in poverty, most of them in Southeast Asia and Africa, 43 million here in the United States. And the world population is growing. There'll be another two billion people on the planet by 2050, half of them in Africa. We also have a trend of mass migration to urban areas. By 2050, 80% of the world's population, 7.2 billion people, will live in cities. Where will they get their food? Where will they get their drinking water? Where will they live? Where will they use the toilet? On top of these challenges, we have the undeniable trend of global warming. A global mean surface temperature increase of more than two degrees Celsius by the end of the century would be catastrophic for humanity, both in the developed world and the developing world. And the biggest impact will be on the global poor. Floods, terrible storms, fire, drought, disease, famine, consequent wars, disasters of truly biblical proportions. And yet, we're on a trajectory for an increase of four degrees in global mean surface temperature by the end of the, the millennium. The end of the century, I'm sorry. So what can we do? What can be done? Is there any cause for hope, given these enormous challenges of poverty and global warming? Well, there are multiple theories of change. Large-scale government aid. Multinational corporations seeing the poor as markets and serving them with goods and services. Charity concerts after natural and human-made disasters. We know, we have enough evidence, that these alone are not enough. They may all be essential. They all may be necessary. But they're not enough. And together, they're not enough. We need something bigger. We need something catalytic. We believe that catalyst is social entrepreneurship. We believe that social entrepreneurs are the people who will change governments, who will change communities, who will change businesses, who will change ecosystems around the poor people on the planet so that we can address these massive problems. The social entrepreneurs give us cause for hope. We have another cause for hope, though, here at a university, and that is our students and recent alumni, the millennial generation. According to a Deloitte study, millennials see the primary purpose of business as improving society not just generating a profit. And $41 trillion, $41 trillion will transfer from the baby boomers to the millennials by 2040. That's an enormous amount of money that can be put to work 
for social and environmental returns as impact investments. Institutional investors and schools, particularly business schools, will need to change. They'll need to adapt to the market demands of the millennial generation. Among the 360 people who RSVP'd for today's event, 80 are self-identified as investors. We have cause for hope that what they hear from 14 social entrepreneurs today will inspire them to put the money that they manage and their own money to work for social and environmental purposes. At the center, we have adopted an integrated approach to helping social entrepreneurs scale their impact. And I have to say personally, and I know that I speak for everyone at the center and everyone involved in the GSBI programs, it's a tremendous honor and a privilege to work with each and every one of the social entrepreneurs who are in their green room now. So I'm saying hi to all of you, and we cannot wait to hear from you, so I'll be quiet in just a minute. Our integrated approach is really reliant on four factors. First and foremost is our GSBI itself and the programs. And we couldn't do what we do with the GSBI without the generous support of our donors. We don't charge the social entrepreneurs anything for the work that we do with them. We want to help them regardless of where they come from. So to the funders, eBay Foundation, Skoll Foundation, Applied Materials, United Nations Global Alliance for Clean Cookstoves, Testarossa Winery, and also the GSBI Endowment funders, Jeff and Karen Miller and Howard and Alita Charney, Thank you so much for your belief in what we do in GSBI and your belief that it should continue in perpetuity. Thank you. The second facet of our integrated approach is Silicon Valley acumen, and that is embodied through our mentor core. The mentors who work with our social entrepreneurs always tell me that they give more, they get more than they give. And no matter how much we ask of them, they're always willing to do more. They seem to have boundless energy. So thank you so much to the mentors for all the work that you do with the social entrepreneurs. It's really wonderful. In the last 10 days, the social entrepreneurs in this cohort have had the opportunity to interact with more than 25 CEOs from Silicon Valley. That's really a tremendous level of engagement to bring our acumen in combination with the Jesuit ethic of serving the poor to benefit these social enterprises. The third facet of our integrated approach is our impact capital program, ably head, headed by John Kohler. And what John seeks to accomplish is mobilizing capital to help these social enterprises scale through innovative investment vehicles. I encourage you to chat with John if you're an investor and you want to think about ways that you can leverage your funds and the funds that you manage. And fourth, very critically, as a university, we have students. We engage Santa Clara University students in action research projects with GSBI alumni to help them solve real problems that are impeding their ability to scale. We have 15 Global Social Benefit Fellows who just spent seven weeks in five different countries working with six different social enterprises. In addition, the Frugal Innovation Lab and our School of Engineering has ongoing projects with 24 uh, social enterprises that have come through the GSBI. Now, as a learning laboratory for scaling social impact, we continue to innovate new ways to support the social entrepreneurial ecosystem. And we couldn't do it without all of you. So I, I want to say thank you for joining us on this amazing journey working with the social entrepreneurs. Now, please join me in welcoming Cassandra Staff, Director of GSBI Programs, who will serve as our MC today. Cassandra. <laughs> Hi. Hi, everybody. Great. Just so good. 
to welcome you all today really and to be introducing our entrepreneurs. So thank you for being here. Before I do that, um, I'd like to invite you to share your feedback with the entrepreneurs. And if you're an investor, schedule some time to meet with them after the agenda today. So um, maybe you've seen we've got our formal program ending at about 12.30. We have a lunch reception that we'd like to invite everyone to. And then from 2 to 4 p.m., we've got some 30-minute windows where we're setting up some meetings with our entrepreneurs and folks who would like to learn more about them. So how do you do this? We have uh, a mobile survey tool. Uh, we used this last year and it's been improved. Um, so if you use your mobile phone and you go to gsbi.sotech.com, um, on your badge this morning, you should have received a little username and login at the bottom of your badge. Go ahead and log in. Um, the entrepreneurs are listed on your screen, so there's two options. You'll hit um, evaluations. You'll select the entrepreneur that you just heard from. You'll provide some feedback, and if you're an investor, you'll say, yes, I want to meet with them, and here's my cell number so that we can get in touch with you to coordinate. Um, the entrepreneurs will have some tables all along the perimeter after lunch where they'll be um, welcoming you all to meet with them. So I have three reasons uh, that I think would be a good reason to use this tool. One is this is a way for you to connect with the entrepreneurs that you're about to hear. Um, you'll find out very momentarily that they are some incredible individuals with some incredible stories. And this is your way to reach out and to maybe say what's on your mind and to give them a little piece of yourself. Uh, the second reason is if you're an investor, you can explore some investment opportunities with some folks that have been going through seven months of rigorous work with their mentors, with the program, and we're doing everything we can to take really solid entrepreneurs and make them even more investment ready. And the third reason, which some of you might be most interested in, so uh, Dr. Kreiner has donated a bottle of Chateau Linge Bage um, <laughs> from the year 2000 uh, from his private cellar. And so anybody that uh, provides feedback to all 14 entrepreneurs will be eligible for this. So I'll keep this down here. And secondly, not as exciting, is uh, we have lunch for four at the historic Adobe Lodge here on campus. A beautiful place to have lunch with Dr. Kreiner and some of the GSBI staff. So I encourage you to provide feedback often, and uh, if you have any issues, please let us know.